Alrighty, so let's go back. So there's four different types of solar eclipses. And uh, these are important to keep note of when you do your eclipse work. So you have the total solar eclipse, and that takes place when the moon completely covers the sun and casts its umbra and penumbra on Earth. A total eclipse of the sun can only take place when the moon is at its perigee. Its perigee meaning when it's closest to the uh, Earth. You can experience a total solar eclipse if you're in the path of the moon's umbra. You can see a partial eclipse at a place where the sun's penumbra falls. Then there's the partial solar eclipse, and that happens when the moon does not completely cover the sun's disk and cast only its penumbra on Earth. The annual solar eclipse occurs when the moon's and umbra falls on Earth and the moon's disk covers the center of the sun's disk, leaving the sun's outer edges uncovered. An annular solar eclipse of the sun can only take place when the moon is at its apogee, an apogee meaning its furthest position from the Earth. An hybrid eclipse is a rare eclipse, and they happen only when an annular eclipse turns into a total, total solar eclipse. How many eclipses in a year? Most calendars have four eclipses, which is the minimum number of eclipses that must take place in a year. Two of these four eclipses must be solar eclipses. While rare, the maximum number of eclipses that can take place in a calendar year is seven. Five solar and two lunar eclipses, or two solar and five lunar eclipses. There can be at least two and at most five solar eclipses in a year. Out of these, no more than two eclipses can be total eclipses of the sun. It is quite rare for a calendar year to have five solar eclipses. According to NASA calculations, only about 25 years in the past, 5,000 years, have had five solar eclipses. The last time that happened was in 1935, and the next time will be in 2206, when two solar eclipses will occur in the month of December. Now, the first eclipse that was forecasted by an astrologer was noted by a Greek historian, and that eclipse occurred in 585 BC in Asia Minor, which brought about an abrupt halt to a battle as the warring armies laid down their arms and declared a truce. And the Greek historian Herodotus, the father of history, who lived in the 5th century BC, cited that Thales, 624 to 547 BCE, a Greek philosopher and astrologer predicted the solar eclipse of May 28, 585 BC that put an end to the conflict between the Lydians and the Medes. Herodotus wrote, Day was all of a sudden changed into night. This event had been foretold by Thales, the Milesian, who forewarned the Ionians of it fixing for it the very year in which it took place. The Medes and the Lydians, when they observed the change, ceased fighting and were alike anxious to have terms of peace agreed on. This was not the first recorded solar eclipse. After failing to predict one such in 2300 BC, two Chinese astrologers attached to the emperor's court were soon detached from their heads. Clay tablets Ooh. from Babylon record an eclipse in Yugirt in 1375 BC, and later records identify a total, total solar eclipses that turned day into night in 1063 and 763 BC.